from the pits of the Pegger Road facility and with the combined forces of transit and air quality, a token was forged. Birthed from the dark power of motor oil and creosote, the token granted special powers to the one who possessed it, allowing them to ride the bus for free, eternally. The assembly decided that no one person could hold this much power, and back to the pit the token was banished. But the token had a will of its own and disappeared until one day a curious chief of staff named Jimbo Wagons stumbled upon it at Pioneer Park. But its mysterious powers proved tempting as the token captivated his thoughts. Olaf, you're late. An attorney is never late, Jimbo Wagons. Nor is she early. She arrives precisely when she means to. Hey Jimbo, what's that shiny object in your hands? I found it at Pioneer Park. It's my precious. Fool of a toque! It's the token of great power. I thought it was destroyed ages ago. The task must be completed. And so the grave task was delegated to an unsuspecting mayor named Froyo and his special assistant, Samway. Froyo and Samway embarked on their journey across the borough on their quest to destroy the token. Dolaf the Wise had directed them north to the tallest point in all the land, but with a warning. Beware of the downtown eyesore, the Polaris, it watches you. After walking all the trails at the Birch Hill Ski Area, Froyo and Sam were unsuccessful in their search. But the trees, wary of outsiders and the trouble they might bring, still pointed the way toward North Pole. But strange forces were at work against them, and Froyo stumbled to the ground, hurt. Desperately, Samway called for help. As swiftly as a phoenix, the FNSB ambulance arrived to heal Froyo's injuries. Before long, they were on their way again. At Chena Lake Recreation Area, the two were met by a friendly park ranger who provisioned them with a canoe and paddle to cross the watery expanse. Once on the other side, they journeyed on to the North Pole Gas Utility Site. Upon observing the construction that was underway to provide gas to the North Pole area, they were heartened to know that the battle against poor winter air quality was being won. Exhausted, Froyo and Samway contemplated using the token just once to make the long trek back to Fairbanks. And so it was decided Using a powerful map, they discovered that their quickest path was to take Max Transit's green line. Froyo couldn't help but be in awe of the token's power. Upon arrival downtown, the two embarked on foot to the Carlson Center to explore its depths, hoping to find clues. But alas, they had no luck in finding the token's home at the facility. However, through a stroke of good fortune, a sign appeared on the horizon, and the two knew where to go. Need a 
find a place to destroy this. What about the large vessel over there? Jill, you're late. An attorney's never late, Jim Williams. Nor is she early. She arrives precisely when she means to. Hey Jim, what's that shiny object in your hands? This thing? I found it at Pioneer Park. It's uh, some old Max Transit token from the 80s. You want it? Yeah. Nah. 